I'm here at the Smart Energy Conference in Sydney and it's, um, it's great to be here. There's about 4,000 people registered here, a lot of people from the clean energy industry. It's their first time they've actually gotten together since the start of the COVID crisis early last year. So it's a great event for them all. I'm actually standing in front of a red electric vehicle. It's made by BYD in China. There's going to be a $30,000 version of this arriving in Australian shores later this year, so that's going to be a bit of a change. But we're actually sitting in a large conference hall and it's not just electric vehicles, it's solar panels, it's battery storage, it's inverters, a whole bunch of ideas and speakers talking about different technologies and projects and what we need to do to actually transform the grid. It's been a fantastic year. We've had record levels of rooftop solar additions, three and a half gigawatts in the last 12 months or something. It's actually changing the grid. It's kicking out the coal-fired power stations. They're really upset about that. The big utilities have actually got to change, but the, all the regulators and the rule makers have actually got to adapt the rules too to this whole new environment. So if you've actually been adding a solar panel onto your roof last year or in any other year, you've actually been contributing to this change, which is now thrust upon the grid. And that's pretty exciting. But we do have barriers. The federal government is just not on board. It keeps on talking about gas and fossil fuels and blue and brown hydrogen and all these other sort of things. And the Federal Energy Minister Angus Taylor was speaking earlier today. He couldn't make it because federal parliament was sitting, so he did a pre-recorded video. It might as well come from a time capsule. I mean, look, it was probably the same things they always say, but people just sort of sat there and watched and weren't even moved to applaud by the end of it. But Fortunately, we've got a lot of state and territory ministers and we had four of them speaking here and they were fantastic. And I just want to play a little something that we heard from Matt Keane, the New South Wales Energy Minister, who spoke at the very opening of this conference yesterday. We believe that a low emissions future is a prosperous future. Delivering cheap green energy into the supply chain of every business in our state guarantees an economy that is bigger, that generates more jobs and better pay for Australian workers. And that was Matt Keane uh, from the New South Wales Energy Minister. It's really important for the industry to hear about from that. Someone who actually understands what's going on, what's needed, what the government needs to do, and who actually gets it, who just sort of says, well, here we are, we're making this transition, and it's going to be cleaner, it's going to be greener, and it's going to be more reliable, and we're going to attract more industry to the economy. That's fantastic. We also heard from Shane Rattenbury in the ACT. They're quite impressive. They've actually got to 100% renewable energy, um, the equivalent of for the electricity grid. So their next phase is in um, of emissions reduction is actually in transport. So they're really talking up electric vehicles and they're introducing programs now and quotas and incentives such as removing stamp duty. And that's really important. So they've already decarbonized the grid and now they're moving on to the um, to, to the other sectors, so land and transport and things like that. We've heard a lot of interesting ideas about hydrogen. That's a really big, um, important technology. Only though, if it's actually green hydrogen and made with wind and solar. Fantastic, vast, we heard talk about vast arrays of solar and wind in Western Australia, up in the Pilbara, up in the Northern Territory, plans for the world's biggest solar farm and the biggest battery storage thing. It's actually really exciting when you just see the vision that's there to transform this economy into a zero emissions economy and actually sort of lead the world. It's just really fantastic. And we also heard more about electric vehicles. We heard from Nissan. Uh, there's a Nissan Leaf over there with bi-directional charging. Just imagine that, you've actually got a battery on wheels and you've got a special plug there, so you're not just charging your vehicle from the grid, you're actually putting the energy from the vehicle back into the grid or back into your house. There's enough energy in that car to keep your house going for three days. Not that you'd ever lose it, use it, but you might as well. And this is all going to be part of the transformation where consumers play this vital role in transforming the grid. I mean, more than half of our energy needs are gonna come from rooftop solar with a battery storage that's in your garage or the battery and wheels that you drive around, you come back, plug back in, and they're providing an essential service for the grid. So, in some ways, it's really aspirational, it's really exciting. I'd just like to finish off with this red car here. It's made by BYD, it's a Chinese company. It's actually uh, partly owned by Warren Buffett. And BYD actually is an acronym for Build Your Dreams. In effect, 
that's what's happening here. People are building their own dreams, they're building our dreams. Just remember, 10 years ago, you can't have renewables in the grid. Maybe 5%, maybe 10%. Well, now we're talking about 100% and how we get there. It can be done, it's really exciting, and it's just great to be at an event like here where everyone's really excited about the opportunity.